and visitors. And as Brother Robin said, we're no strangers here. But we want to thank God for Pastor Sumi and Sister Mutia for inviting us once again to be with you, to be with our brothers and sisters. And I look over the congregation, I see smiling Mary and Simon there, and so many, so many of you. It's just a delight to see you today, and we are so delighted. Amen. And um, I believe God do have a word for us today, and I believe that we are living in the last days. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out, you know. Things are happening swiftly. Times is moving. Things are changing around us. And we need more than ever to hold on to God's unchanging hand. You know, uh, just a few weeks ago, Vermont, they, 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 they legalized marijuana. And then a, a week later, they had a flood. So you figure this out. 13-year-old boy wrestling with his five-year-old sister killed her because he was practicing the move he sees on uh, the wrestling show. So we really need to really pray and draw near to God. I heard of another story just this week. A, 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 a three-year-old boy got hit, crushed in the head with a hammer. This, this man was deranged right in the supermarket as the mother just turned around to look at the cereal box. She heard a, 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 large, a, a large noise and the, the skull was crushed. So we read more than ever, my brothers and my sisters, we always try to bring a word to encourage you, a word to challenge you that you may come up higher. Amen. And my word this morning is Miracle Milestones. We, the, the title of the message is Miracle Milestone. Uh, there's times in our life that God has done miracles for us, and we need to mark those miracles. Amen? You know, the, the Bible talks about when the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. To us, the body of Christ. The flood is here. It's not coming. It's already here. Hollywood, the media, Broadway, Madison Avenue has opened their sewage pipe, piping their filth and sewage to your living room. The envelope is being pushed every day. Day by day is being pushed up a notch to the brim. Our cup is full. Our cup is full. My message this morning is Miracle Milestone. If you would turn with me to Exodus 16. Exodus 16. We'll have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you, Lord. We worship you because you alone are God. You alone are worthy to be praised. And Father, such a special anointing in this place. Father, your people are here. Help me to be hidden behind the cross. That, Father, that they would hear Jesus and they would hear your word. Spirit of the living God, come in the midst of us, Lord, that you may minister to your people who are gathered here for a word from you. Lord, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that no weapon in hell formed against this service will prosper. We serve notice to every principality, every work of distraction, every work of iniquity, everything contrary to the word of God. We cast it out right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the precious blood that's upon this congregation. We thank you, Lord, for, Father, you will speak to your people today. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We're living in the last days, and we need to hold on to God. Hallelujah. Time is filled with swift transition. None on earth unmoved can change. Build your life on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. You got to hold to his hands. God's unchanging hand, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand, build your life on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, hallelujah Lord, hallelujah Lord, we worship you, hallelujah Lord, we give you the glory and honor and praise, hallelujah. Yes, brothers and sisters, it's time to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Exodus 16, 
verse 31 and 32. And the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like a coriander seed, white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, this is a thing which the Lord commanded. Fill a omer of it to be kept for your generation, that there may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. This first point here speaks to me about God's provision. You see, there's three articles inside the ark. First of all, the ark is inside the Holy of Holies. If you go back to Solomon's temple, it's the most expensive real estate ever built. I was reading an article two years ago. It says the gold and the silver of Solomon's temple was worth $218 billion, not million, billion. It shows you how precious God's presence is. But inside the ark, brothers and sisters, there's three articles. There's the manna. To me, that speaks about God's provision. He's a provider. He will provide your need, your daily need. He is the God that will sustain and keep you no matter what's going on with the economy, no matter what's happening on Wall Street. You see, Wall Street is booming, but many nations are suffering right now. Uh, Greece, all across Spain is in the brink. Italy, things are happening swiftly. We need to hold on to God's unchanging hand. The first point is God as a provider. It does, it does not matter what you're going through, my brothers and my sisters. God will provide for you. You need to just trust and believe God. As he told Mary and Martha, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. God is able to provide for you. He did it for the, the widow at Zarephath. He did it for us, my wife and I. He did, I could tell you how God provided. Even in the trip to Russia, God provided uh, for us uh, in an unprecedented way. I worked for a large uh, bank in New York. I was an operations supervisor. We did have the funds to go on the trip, but the Lord was leading us and said, let the bank pay for it. And we did. We went to the bank, and uh, I worked for the bank. It's an international bank, and we went to the bank, and the Lord was directing us to go straight to the president, not the vice president, not the other, but to the president. And three weeks later, they paid our way to go to Russia on a mission trip to minister to the children in Russia. That is God as a provider. I could tell you many, many other stories, but I want to bring a, a point to you, a story about Pastor Arturo. Pastor Arturo lived here in Texas. He's a Mexican pastor. He pastored several churches. He, he pioneered and he started several churches in Mexico. But you know the situation in Mexico, what's going on at this time. So some of the pastors would run away and they would get fearful. But Pastor Arturo, who lives right here in Houston, would have to drive all the way on the weekends. On a Friday, he would leave to go to tender to the flock there. But this one time he was ministering, and Pastor Oturo, he's a humble man. He's a man of God. And he was sharing with me how the Lord moved in a special way as he ministered the word. And the congregation was about 120 people. They gave a love offering to him. And Pastor Oturo was saying, Lord, what should I do with this offering? I have gas money, and my refrigerator is full back in Houston. What should I do with this offering? And the Holy Spirit began to speak to him and said, you give that offering to that lady over there. So for those who may say, well, God speaks like that. Uh, that was for then. No, it's for now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God still speak if you would listen. Isaiah says that you would hear a still small voice behind you said, this is the way to go walk in it. So Pastor Arturo obeyed the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And he called the lady out. He said, Miss, this is for you. This finance is for you. And the Lord told me that you want to eat barbecued <laughs> fried meat. Uh, it must be something special in Mexico. And you love the aroma of it. She began to weep. 
she began to cry. See, this lady was experiencing God as a provider. He, she was experiencing God to come through because the pastor said, the pastor of the church says, Pastor Arturo, you know that lady is the only one in the congregation who's not working. And her husband's leg was just broken. So she, the whole congregation began to weep and cry for joy to see how God moved in the midst to provide for this lady. Out of 120 people, the Holy Spirit pointed out that sister. And that sister was rejoicing. That sister was rejoicing. So I want you to know, God knows where you are, my brothers and my sisters, or friends and visitors. He knows exactly how to provide for you. He will show himself to be a provider. That first article in the ark was a manna to remind the children of Israel that God will provide no matter what the circumstances. He knows where you are and he will provide no matter what the economy is saying, no matter what the government is saying. No matter even your job, if they shut their doors, God will provide for you. And I want to encourage you this morning that God sees you and he will provide your need. You see, here in Exodus 16, 31, the manna speaks to me about God sustaining your daily supply. But much more than that, God provided for the children of Israel. He covered them with the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. He protected them. My second point that I want to bring forth is in Numbers 17. Numbers 17, verse 5 and 8 and verse 10. Number 17, if you go back to Numbers 16, there was a rebellion in the camp. In number 16, Korah, Dayton, Abiram, and 250 leaders rose up in rebellion against Moses and Aaron. But God told in verse 5, it says, It should come to pass that the man's rod whom I, had, whom I should choose should blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmuring of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Verse 8. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and bloom blossom and yielded almond. And Moses, verse 9, brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel, and they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels, and thou should quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. You see, they were questioning Moses and Aaron's authority. And perhaps right now you're going through a time in your life. You know God has called you. He's anointed you and appointed you. Even in the very job that you may have, at work, that people come against you. You got circumstances and situation. God wants to show himself as a protector. He protected Moses. He protected Aaron because that's who God is. He protected his anointed. He said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. God is able to protect you as he called you to the ministry, as he called you in your workplace. You may seem like, it may seem like everything is against you. Adversity and things, uh, uh, people are coming against you. God wants to show himself as a protector. That's why he had that second article there, to remind the children of Israel that in the midst of an impossible situation, the rod budded, it brought forth fruit. It brought forth almond. And you may feel that you're going through a time in your life. God want to produce fruit in you as he protect you from the things of darkness, from the things of this world. I could tell you a story of how God protected us. The Lord directed us to go bless someone who was uh, going through a time. They, needed, uh, they, they were needy. They needed grocery. And we took a drive and we went and we finished the assignment, but on our way back home, as we drive and we're getting off the highway, and 
it says, you know, speed limit 45. So I'm staying at 45. And this car is right behind me going almost like he was going to hit us. He was tailgating. So when we got off the highway, the car went on to our left. And my wife, bless her heart, Christine was saying, do not go near that car, whatever you do. He was on the left lane. We were on the right lane. So I stood behind like a car left behind. Next thing you know, the car backed up. And my heart is, my heart is beating, and I, I don't know what's happening. They lowered the mirror. All I could see was the eye of the, the man on the passenger side, and it was saying evil. The eye was evil, and there was such a fear that came in, 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 in our car. We knew this was evil. But God was protecting us. We began to pray in our hearts because we didn't even want to open our, I didn't even want to look. Next thing you know, the car moved up. We were going to make a left because we were in, a, in, in, in the lane where you can make a left or go straight. The car made the left, but we did not make a left. We kept going. We said, Lord, thank you for protecting us. That was God protecting us. I could tell you stories of God protected us in Florida. I could tell you stories of God protected us so many times God protected us and God is watching over you my brothers and my sisters as he told the children of Israel to put that rod there he was saying I will protect you society things may rise up you see things are spinning out of control all over the place we've been hearing stories of things that's happening in the political realm that I wouldn't even be able to share with you in the pulpit right here in America, but God is able to protect his saints. Now, when God protected us and that car went that way, I took the license plate and I wrote down the license plate, but I kept going straight. I didn't turn where they were. And this is a word for you, my brothers and my sisters. If God protected you from a terrible relationship, if God protected you and pulled you out of the fire and he delivered you from an addiction, don't, don't go that way. We kept going straight because God protected us. We said, we're not going that way. That was danger. That was evil. And this morning, God has a word for you. If God pulled you out of the fire, if God protected you from danger, and he said, this way, my son, not that way. Obey the voice of the Lord. These uh, miracle milestones or for our journey, as we walk in this journey, and when the enemy come in like a flood, begin to abuse you in the mind and saying, this is not going to happen. That's not going to happen. God did call you, but that was for them. That's not going to happen now. Believe the word of God. Obey the word of God. The miracle milestones is to remind you how God protected, how God provided, that you may go forth, forward into what God has called you to do. Because you see, when you look at that, you said, how could that be with the children of Israel? All this miracle, 40 years, their, their shoes didn't wear out. 40 years, the Lord provided for them. But you, each one of us in this room, I know you have a miracle milestone. There is no one that is sitting here could tell me God has not provided. Amen. There is nobody that sitting here could say, God has not protected you. You see, God protects from seen and unseen danger. And he's doing it. Even as you came here, God protected you. Because, you know, Texas has the largest uh, crash rate as far as uh, death. And, and, and you know what it is? Drunken driving is number one in Texas. We go to the restaurants, we see people drinking, and they get behind the wheel. So you have to thank God when you get home. You said, Lord, thank you that you protected me. Thank you that you kept me from danger. We do often take that for granted. But I want you to remind you to mark down these miracle milestones that God is a provider and God is a protector. Even if you don't write it down, I know us men, sometimes we have a hard time writing journal, but remind yourself, God protected me. God provided for me. Therefore, this is nothing new to God. He's the same yesterday forever. He will take me through this time again. 
he'll do it again. You know, the songwriter said, I may not know when, I may not know how, but he will do it again. And that is a word this morning. God will do it again, my brothers and my sisters. Don't let the enemy lie to you and, and you sit there and say, it's not going to happen. It will happen because he's a covenant-keeping God. My third point, and I'll be out the way and I'll give room for Christine to come and, and share what's in our heart. Exodus 25, verse 21. The third thing, the third article that's in the ark is the testament. The law, the Ten Commandments. This speaks to me about how God is a covenant-keeping God. Covenant-keeping God. Exodus 25, verse 21. And thou should put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou should put the testimony I should give thee. Not only God said I will put, I want you to put the testimony in the ark. He said I will give you a testimony in the midst of everything that he is God. And, you know, it's so interesting that God said he will never leave us and never forsake us in Hebrews 13. That we could boldly say, what can man do unto me? You see, God is a God that will not leave you or forsake you. He loves you this morning. I want you to know that. I want you to hear that in your spirit realm. God loves you. He will never leave or forsake you. That you may boldly say in Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, what can men do unto me? What can society, the economy, the enemies, the haters do unto me? If God be for me, who can be against me? No heights. In Romans 8:31, it said, What should we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spare not his own son, but deliver him up for us all, how should he not with him also freely give us all things? Who should lay anything, Romans 8:32, to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justify. Who is it that condemn? It is Christ that die. Yea, rather that it is risen again. Who is it even at the right hand of God? Who also make intercession for us? Who should separate us from the love of Christ? Should tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Romans 8.37 Nay, in all these things we are more than conqueror to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor dead, nor any other creature should be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. You see, God has an everlasting covenant. And Isaiah, you don't have to turn there. Isaiah 55, 3 says, the ever, everlasting covenant, the sh show mercies of David. You know, many times in the Old Testament, God said, I did this. Because of David's sake. God did this because of David's sake. Though the king was wicked, that king was wicked. Whether it was Ahab, he said, I did this because of David's sake. But how much more now? God is doing this, not for David's sake, but for Jesus' sake. Because Jesus died for us and he rose for us. That we may have victory over death, hell, and the grave. So how much more that the king of glory, my brothers and my sisters, is in the midst of us. You know, uh, it says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in Psalm 90 from all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So you may say, that, that's Old Testament. That was Old Testament. That was Old Testament. And I'm going to turn to one last scripture in Revelation 11, verse 19. One last scripture. You may say that's Old Testament with the ark, but God gave those miracle milestones. Remember, those miracle milestones is for our journey that we mark these things as we walk with the Lord. Revelation 11, verse 19. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightning and voices and thundering and earthquake and great 
hell. This was talking about the judgment that's coming, basically the second coming of the Lord, but the temple of God was open in heaven. And John the Revelator saw the ark there. So, the, you know, the, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the ark is, even in the New Testament, even in the end time, the ark is there. It's, it's showing us, brothers and sisters, that these miracle milestones, whether God as a protector, God as a provider, God as a covenant keeper, is always there for you and I. My word this morning is that you would be encouraged that whatever you're going through adversity, whatever you're going through the trials, God is able to do for you. Not only a provider, not only a protector, not only a covenant keeper, he's a healer. God is able to heal you where you are. We've heard of miracles and we've seen miracles. I had a coworker who was third stage cancer. Prayer was made in the name of Jesus and she was healed. And the doctors had to say this was a miracle. Now, I want to encourage you today, no matter what you're going through, God is able to heal. And I've heard, and I've, uh, my wife and I, we met this young man in New York as we used to minister in the trains. And this young man was healed from HIV, AIDS. You will not hear that in the New York Times or any other place. But this young man went back seven times to take that test, and it came back negative. And the doctors say, we don't know what happened. But we know it was God who did it. And I want you to know this morning, God is able to heal you from where you are. But these promises, brothers and sisters, is not just for, oh, well, I could live my, my life the, the way I want to live because uh, God is a covenant keeper. I could continue living in sin. No, it's not that way. We're not here to play church. We're here to get right with God because we are living in the last days. And the Bible tells us that Jesus says that unless you repent, you should likewise perish. He said that twice in Luke 13, 3 and, and Luke 13, 7. Unless you repent, you should likewise perish. This is a walk of repentance. If you fall, get up and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And I want to make things right with you. Amen. So I want to encourage you this morning to know that he's a provider, that he's a protector, and he's a covenant keeper. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus.